We have some exclusive news on the upcoming Dungeons & Dragons WizKids booster set coming this winter, plus what to expect from Warlock Tiles and other WizKids TTRPG products, today on the Gallant Goblin Gazette. This video is brought to you by the Deck of Many and their Big Bad Booklet series. On Wednesday, we had a Zoom meeting with Patrick O'Hagan, the executive producer for RPGs over at WizKids. He gave us some exclusive scoops, which we can share with you today, but we also discussed expanding what we cover here on the Gallant Goblin. So going forward, you'll be seeing a lot more reviews of WizKids RPG products, including unpainted miniatures. These are not paid reviews, but they will be contributing the products to us for reviews. So we're very excited to be able to share more fun stuff with you, but let's get to the news. Keep in mind this information is subject to change and especially with the world being in the state that it's in right now, dates may change as well. But for Dungeons and Dragons, we know the next big Icons of the Realms booster set is Mythic Odysseys of Theros coming in August. Shortly after that is Icewind Dale, Rime of the Frost Maiden, coming in September. Now, there have been some teases about what the next set after that would be. Well, we can report that coming in November. We have a full booster set called Fangs and Claws, which will include huge miniatures. He listed off several of the ones included in the set, so we'll let you know. We don't have any prototypes or renders to show you, but we can showcase some of the art here. So first, we have a new Aboleth. Aboleths are designated as large creatures in 5e that they've always been enormous in my imagination. Despite just having a CR of 10, they do get legendary actions and layer actions, so I'm excited to see what they do with this. Expanding the Icons of the Realms slod lineup is the Green Slod, another large aberration. Green Sloddy are smart and capable spellcasters, even able to alter their shape to appear human, another formidable foe. Next is the long elusive Tridrone. I don't know about you, but I love the Modrons and really want to see a 5e adventure that takes full advantage of them. Tridrones have long been a hole in the lineup, so I'm very excited to see them. Hopefully we'll get more Modrons in the years to come. Another very exciting addition is the Kirin, a huge celestial creature often acting as a direct agent of a benevolent deity. On the material plane, they're often seen as powerful forces for good and harbingers of destiny. Next, we have the Young Red Dragon. So Patrick talked to us a lot about how they're working with wizards to really standardize dragon sizes at various life stages. And not just the base size, mind you, but height and wingspan, all of it. So we should be seeing much more consistent dragon sizes going forward. Along with the Young Red Dragon, we have a Young Green Dragon. Now, young dragons are considered large creatures. Adults are huge, and ancient dragons are gargantuan. As we know, we have a series of gargantuan dragons on the way as well. We should get all of the gargantuan chromatic dragons by the end of 2021. But back to fangs and claws. Also included in the set is a new kobold miniature. We don't know much more about it than that, but if you're a fan of kobolds, I'm going to take this chance to throw in a plug for our merch store where we're designing a whole line of cute kobolds that you can have printed on your shirts, on shower curtains, on art prints, or on mugs like this. Next, we have an Amirage, the rather iconic fuzzy horned rabbits often found in Schult. These make especially good familiars due to their high cuteness bonuses. Speaking of small cute creatures, Fangs and Claws will include a Boggle, little fey creatures with oversized heads and rather oily complexions. These little creatures are manifestations of loneliness. Now moving away from the small cute creatures, next on our list is the Giant Wolf Spider from the Basic Rules. These medium-sized creatures are found in deserts and forests and grasslands. Another Basic Rules creature that hasn't gotten a lot of love lately is the Lizard Folk. We have a new one coming in this set, and there are quite a few lizard folk stat blocks out there these days, so we'll have to wait and see which kind of lizard folk this fella is going to be. While it may not be a frightening foe to throw at your players, another mini included in this set should be quite useful for your adventuring parties that like to bring along a, a wagon on their journeys. Yes, we have a mule, which also has its stat block in the basic rules. Need to spice up your random road encounters? Just get your party to name their pack animals, and then Throw down their minis during a random encounter, putting them at risk, unless the players swiftly dispose of their enemies before little Timmy the Mule gets it. 
So was I alone in being really disappointed that Swamp Thing was canceled prematurely over on DC Universe? Well, maybe the inclusion of a new Vine Blight mini might help ease your pain. These medium-sized plant creatures from the Monster Manual are the only blights capable of speech. Swamp Thing is probably saying, Save me. I'm just hoping the CW and HBO Max are listening. Back to fey creatures. Another cool addition is the Gloom Weaver, a member of the Shadowfell-based elves loyal to the Raven Queen. The Gloom Weaver is a formidable warrior armed with shadow magic. These guys are almost as powerful as Abolus when you compare challenge ratings. This set is also going to include at least one new Mimic, though Patrick indicated that, quote, many more Mimics will be coming. So be sure to bring along your 10-foot pole on any adventures that you may go on this winter. He, the one he did name for us is a Burbling Mimic, so take from that what you will. Next on the list is a new Banshee Mini, a chaotic evil undead creature formed from the spirit of an elf. The whale of one of these creatures can instantly drop someone to zero hit points, which can be quite a shock for a player. Patrick said the set would include all elementals, presumably air, earth, fire, and water. We didn't get any indication of what size they would be, but new elementals are always fun to have around. Plus, good artists can have some fun with these designs, so I'm looking forward to seeing what they come up with. Another fun elemental included in the set is the Merid, a large genie from the elemental plane of water. These powerful creatures are the counterpoints to the earth-based Dao, the fire-based Efreet, and the air-based Jin. One more large elemental to tell you about. Straight from Volo's guide is the Flail Snail, a large earth elemental creature. How hard can it be to defeat a large snail with a pretty iridescent shell, you may be asking? Well, it does have five flail tentacles, so there's that. Getting to the really good stuff now, this set will include a Tyrannosaurus Rex, a huge-sized dinosaur that should really get the attention of your players when you plop it down on the table. Another powerful huge creature that should get your players' attention is the Dire Troll. A Dire Troll is what results when trolls, who have regenerative abilities, start eating each other and grafting troll body parts onto themselves. So good old-fashioned nightmare fuel. Finally, one creature we did get a peek at was the huge-sized Fire Giant Skeleton. It very much looks like a horrid undead version of the Fire Giant Mini from the Storm King's Thunder set. This one should be pretty amazing. So that's what we know about Fangs and Claws coming out around November 2020. And as you know, we're in the middle of reviewing all the initial sets of Warlock tiles as well. These are WizKids' new line of terrain that's designed to be affordable, versatile, and durable. Well, there's a lot of expansions coming out over the next year or so. We know about several already, but you can expect a set of full-size, two-inch walls in November. A town square set is coming in January, along with a scatter terrain set with stalls and gallows and other fun town setting pieces. Now, he mentioned that they're designing these upcoming sets to have roads that you can modularly put together to make a realistic town with multiple buildings, so that'll be pretty exciting. In January, if you're tired of 90 degree walls, we'll be getting curves and corners to really open up your build options. If you need more finer control over the size of your builds, as one commenter mentioned in our review of the Dungeon Tiles 1 set, you'll be getting 1x1 one one inch Warlock tiles around April of next year. Next July, you should see a set of tunnels and caves, with sewers coming around October of 2021. And a sort of grassland, swampy, primitival hamlet set coming in December. And in 2022, they're aiming to bring us a wilderness set and a ruin set. Now, if you're wanting just a few extra pieces for particular builds and don't want to have to buy a full pack or expansion pack, they will be selling individual pieces through the WizKids web store. They're also planning to expand our options for connecting the Warlock tiles together. Right now, the Warlock clips are extremely durable. They, they can be a little bit hard on the skin for people with very delicate fingers like myself. They're going to be releasing some softer clips soon that should give some options uh, so you can have what works best for you. They'll also be coming out with swift clips, which operate a bit like the corner pillars do. They rely on just friction instead of the fully clipping inside. So you can just kind of slot your builds together very quickly and it'll keep everything secure on your table, but it's not designed for carrying the build entirely from one room to the next. Ultimately, the WizKids system is gonna give you plenty of options for connecting the tiles to each other so you can have what works best for you. Another exciting new line of minis is the D&D Paint Night Kit 
which includes an unpainted mini, a series of curated Vallejo paints, brushes, and a water pot. There will also be a painting how-to video for each one posted online by the nice folks over at Realmsmith. This line kicks off with the Manticore hitting store shelves in early July. Next will be an Ogre Zombie in September. Now be sure to go ahead and reserve these quick as it seems like the supply might be a little limited at first. As for Pathfinder, we have the City of Lost Omens set still scheduled for July and the Darklands Rising set coming in December. And we're just a week or two away from the very first set of WizKids Starfinder minis. They're kicking things off with a thick set of monster creatures and a thick set of heroes, and we'll be reviewing those as soon as we can get our hands on them. And then we're happy to announce that the first full booster set of Starfinder Battles will be hitting in January 2021. It'll feature 40 unique minis and random booster boxes, and I'm super excited about it. And we can start expecting a series of unpainted Starfinder minis too, along the lines of the Deep Cuts line from the Pathfinder unpainted minis. Now you may be, you may remember that WizKids has a new line of Warbands coming out, so, uh, coming out soon too. And these are fixed sets that will include six to eight minis each, and will focus on a specific type of creature. So first we're getting a Goblin Warband. Next is a set of Kobolds, like these fellows over here. Then we get Orcs, and finally a set of Grung. And these sets should get us through the end of next year, 2021. WizKids is also getting into the Papercraft 2D terrain as well, as we've teased before. One awesome product coming in March 2021 is a Phandalin set of buildings. So Phandalin features in the D&D Starter Set, the Essentials Kit, and the Acquisitions Incorporated book. They're planning to release Papercraft versions of all the buildings, including presumably the Phandalin Miners Exchange, Trisender Manor, and hopefully Alderley Farm, which is the home of Finny Toscobble, one of the player characters in my home game. Hey, Alex. And as we've talked about on this channel, minis can be expensive investments. And happily, WizKids is expanding their lineup to suit different budgets, like with the papercraft sets we were just talking about. We'll also be getting 2D acrylic mini sets, which will be much cheaper too. This line is called Idols of the Realms and kicks off with a set to support the Essentials Kit in October and then another set in December for Icewind Dale. Going forward, we should see 2D Idols of the Realm sets coming out about three months after each major Icons of the Realm set. And these sets will be about $15 for about 15 2D minis. But I'm already seeing pre-orders online for some of these for as low as $12, so see what you can find out there. Now let me know what you think of all this news in the comment section down below. Many thanks to Patrick O'Hagan and the folks over at WizKids for letting us share this news with you, and we're very happy to expand our WizKids coverage here for you in the coming months. And we also, of course, want to thank our longtime sponsor, The Deck of Many. Through their Patreon, they're releasing new creative content for 5th edition D&D each month, including new tarot-sized reference cards and their Big Bad Booklet series, which features new boss monsters each month to drop into your D&D games. You can sign up to receive the booklets digitally or print it out in a nice booklet. Each booklet gives you everything you need to run an awesome little story about a particular big bad, including background information, role-playing guides, stat blocks, art, and story hooks, and more. This month, come meet Tendon and Bone, a strange mutated drow and their blind basilisk companion who stalk their prey in crystal caverns deep below the earth. Will you be the hunter or the hunted? Learn more at bigbadbooklet.com. And if you like my shirt or this mug, they're available in our merch store over at gallantgoblin.redbubble.com for Pride Month. All the profits from the sale of our Dragon Pride Adventurers design, which is the one on our mug here, will go to Glisten, an organization whose mission is to protect LGBTQ plus children in grades K through 12. So I hope you'll support us with that. Otherwise, thank you for watching today. You can also help us by leaving a little like down below, subscribing to the channel, and leaving us a comment. I hope you're doing well out there, and we'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. Mm -hmm.